College Algebra, Topic 4.3, Graphing Quadratic Functions in General and Standard Form. Okay, this is in general form. We're going to graph this quadratic. First, we're going to find the axis of symmetry. The formula for the axis of symmetry is the opposite of B all over, the, all over 2A. B stands for the number here in front of X. A stands for the number here in front of x squared. So this will be the opposite of b, which is negative 4, all over 2 times a, which will be 2 times 2. And this ends up being negative 1. So our graph here, we're going to have negative 1 as an axis of symmetry. Next, we want the vertex. When in general form, we find the vertex by taking the function itself, inputting the formula for the axis of symmetry, and then whatever answer we get for y will complete our vertex. So in this case, this will be negative 1 placed into the function, which is 2 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 minus 15. Negative 1 squared is 1, times 2 is 2, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, and then there's the negative 15. This all becomes negative 17, and this is our vertex here at negative 1, negative 17. Now, before we can uh, finish with the um, y-intercept and the x-intercept, we're going to look at the orientation. Since the a is positive 2, this tells us that the orientation will be upward for the parabola. Another word, way to say that is concave up. So let's just kind of draw a parabola in going up, and then we'll complete the parts and pieces. Okay, now let's continue. The y-intercept. The y-intercept is found by taking the function in general form or standard form and inputting 0. And whatever you get as the answer will be your y-intercept. So let's put 0 in for all our x's. We get 2 times 0 squared plus 4 times 0 minus 15. And for he this, we'll get 15 as an answer. So this is our y-intercept right here, 0, negative 15. And finally, our x-intercepts. Well, x-intercepts are found by taking your function, setting it equal to 0, and then solve for x. So our function is 2x squared, let's raise this a bit, and plus 4x minus 15 set equal to 0. This doesn't factor, so we're going to solve this by using the quadratic formula, which is the opposite of b, which would be negative 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 4 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 15, all over 2 times a, which will be 2 times 2. All right. This will simplify to a negative 4, and that should be plus or minus. I started my root too early. Plus or minus root. 4 squared is 16. And negative 4 times 2 times negative 15 is a positive 120. And that's all over 2 times 2, which is 4. From here, I must take the um, square root of, um, of the sum, which will be the square root of 136. Now, I can't take the square root of 136. That's not a perfect square. But I want to see if there's a perfect square in there. So I'm going to start off. Let's say with 136, and I'll start dividing that by perfect squares. Let's say 16, so divide by 16, and 8.5, so 16 is not in there. Let's take 136, divided by another perfect square, let's say 4. All right, it goes in evenly, so we get, so it'll be 4 times 34. So we'll change this into negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 times 34. The square root of 4 will be 2, so this ends up being negative 4 
we'll put that over 4, plus 2, over, 2 squared of 34 all over 4. And then we'll also get a second answer of negative 4 over 4 minus 2 squared of 34 over 4. We're splitting up the plus and minus, and we'll also split up the 4 into both denominators. This gives us our x-intercepts. This simplifies to a negative 1 and a square root of 34 over 2. That'll be this x-intercept here. Negative 1 plus the square root of 34 all over 2. This will simplify to a negative 1 and a negative square root of 34 over 2. And that'll be this intercept right here. So negative 1 minus the square root of 34 all over 2. And everything's labeled, and we have our graph. Now, let's try standard form. On standard form, we'll be doing problem number six. Problem number six is f of x equals three times x plus one all squared minus 15. First, we're going to find the um, vertex, I'm sorry, no, the axis of symmetry. And the method for finding the vertex and the axis of symmetry, um, the axis of symmetry here in um, standard form, is that x is going to equal h. Now, what h comes from is that the form here is a plus the op x minus the opposite of h plus k. So 1 stands for the opposite of h, therefore, negative 1 will be h. So we begin to draw this. We'll have a axis of symmetry at x equals negative 1. Secondly, the vertex. The vertex is found by taking the combination of h and k and treating those as x and y. Well, h we found was negative 1, and k is this number here, which is negative 15. And that's our vertex. negative 1, negative 15. Now, looking at the orientation, the, the A is positive 3. That means that the orientation will be upward. So let's go ahead and draw in our parabola at this point. And then we'll finish out by finding the y-intercept and the x-intercept. Okay. Y-intercepts are found by making the um, all the x's 0 in the function and finding out where the value is. And that'll complete the um, x value, or y value, should I say, the vertex. Sorry, the y-intercept. Okay, so let's make the x 0 here. So 0 equals 3 times 0 plus 1, all squared minus 15. Well, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 squared is 1, times 3 is 3. And we'll end up with a negative 12 here. So this y-intercept will be 0, negative 12. All right, furthermore, we need the x-intercept. Well, for the x-intercept, the rule is, is that we take the function, we set it equal to 0, and then we solve for x. So let's take 3x plus 1 all squared minus 15. We'll set it equal to 0. We'll solve for x. Now, we have four things to get rid of, 3, the positive 1, the square, and the negative 15. So at least four steps here. So first step, let's get rid of the negative 15 simply by putting it to the other side. So we get 3 plus or minus 1, sorry, 3 plus 1 squared equals positive 15. From here, we'll get rid of the 3 by dividing everything by 3. And now we're down two steps. Okay, the last two steps is getting rid of the square and then the 1. To get rid of the square, we're going to use the square root on both sides. Also, we need plus or minus here, but that does get rid of the square. We have x plus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 5. To get rid of the 1, we just subtract 1 from both sides, and we end up with x equals a negative 1 plus the square root of 5. Let's raise that a bit. And we also have a second answer, negative 1 minus the square root of 5. Breaking up this plus or minus gives us both our um, x-intercepts. The x-intercepts on the right will be the negative 1 plus the square root of 5, whereas the x-intercept on the left will be the negative 1 minus the square root of 5.